Oh, I see. Stephen has connected. Hello, Stephen. Hello, Professor. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm very happy to see uh, all of you here. Um, maybe Aaron will join in a in, in couple of minutes. So, um, today uh, the... Oh, hi Aaron, nice seeing you connected. So, and uh, Professor Parent is also here, right? I see. Yes. Okay, very good, very good, yeah. Uh, welcome to, to the uh, meeting. And uh, the meeting today is inspired by uh, the experimental research in the Professor Parent uh, group. So we will try to share some uh, computational results and uh, maybe uh, there will be feedback from from experiment as well as we can discuss and uh, share some uh, some ideas for um, navigate better progress in, in this direction so there will be two uh, talks one by steven vester who was in the undergraduate um, program of um, MSUM and uh, took audited computational course and did mini project on ruthenium um, catalysts and so it will be um, a little longer than mini projects uh, presentations in class but I think not, not very long and then uh, Dr. Yun Han will show more details um, and so that we share where we are and uh, how we can navigate to um, get better success in this in this project so uh, professor parent uh, would you like to give maybe a couple of sentences uh, general goal of your research uh, we were having a group meeting about half a year ago but just for the context context okay yeah yeah um yeah we're working on trying to develop the Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, so uh, let me uh, then invite uh, uh, to, to give initiative to um, Stephen. So Stephen, please uh, go ahead and um, just pre present your, your slides. Oh, so uh, can everybody hear me okay? Okay. So as uh, Dr. Kellen said, I presented on the effect of oxygen bonding on the stability of nanolithium catalysts as a small project, uh, Chemistry 476, of uh, course, which I audited last spring. Next slide, please. So some background on what I'm working with. This was done using the Vendi. Vienna Ab Initio Simulation Package, which is a uh, computer simulation package for uh, molecular modeling that's based on the Kahn-Sham equation and uh, the density functional theory. The critical point of that is that it assumes non-interacting one electron shell or orbitals, which uh, you can calculate twice to find the upspin and the downspin of each orbital. Next slide. And so the three models that I uh, built using uh, Gaussian and then uh, tested using VASP were from the left to the right, a hydrate-based molecule with a water molecule as a ligand, 
a hydroxide-based molecule with a hydroxide group, as the ligand, and an oxide group with just an oxygen as the ligand on the ruthenium. Uh, the most interesting one of this would be the conversion between the, uh, the hydride and the hydroxide. Next slide. Oh, may I add a comment? Yes. Okay, so I would like to... Uh, uh, so, uh, sorry. Um, please let me attract attention uh, to the coordination of the... Um, greenish ruthenium uh, ion in the center. Um, originally, it is expected to be octahedrally to have uh, six coordinations, and one of the coordinations should be to this uh, uh, PO3 group, but uh, either by mistake or by chemical intuition or good luck, uh, Stephen uh, elongated this bond, and I would like to attract your attention to this fact, because later on in his presentation, this uh, uh, happen to lead to some um, probably positive uh, consequences. Okay, I'm done, and here's your next slide. So, looking at the uh, charge on the different molecular structures, we can see a very interesting uh, change between the hydrate and the hydroxide with only a 0.2 change in the total electron volts between them, which is a very worthwhile uh, opportunity to invest, just investigate. Uh, that's uh, really all I can say about this slide right now. Uh, can, can, you, can, you, can you give more explanation like to the uh, all symbols, like what is uh, in the right most, leftmost names uh, of the columns? Uh, how do you name them? Uh, right, right. Uh, in the leftmost column, the uh, R, U, L, G, and then the variants, uh, those are the abbreviations that I use to uh, keep track of the different structures in the uh, VASP program and the different files in Gaussian. So from top to bottom, they stand for the R, U, ruthenium, L, G, ligand, and then the last two are the uh, different ligand forms in it, HY, hydride, HO, hydroxide, OX, uh, oxide. Mm -hmm. And what is on the top uh, row of, of each tables? What are, what are these numbers? Um, that would be the, be the uh, total number of electrons uh, in different charge states. So how to con uh, convert this total number of electrons in your oxidation uh, states? I'm not entirely sure what you're asking. Like um, in the table one, you are showing yes. different, a different number of electrons as a title for the uh, different columns. And then inside the columns, a uh, certain number of electrons gives different oxidation state. So how do you compute the oxidation state if you, have, uh, if you set up total number of electrons? Uh, wouldn't that just be subtracting the uh, the positive oxidation state from the total electrons of the neutral molecule? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good, good. And uh, in the table two, uh, which trends do you see? Uh, which uh, um, is it right that more negative number is more stable and uh, less negative is less stable? Uh, not necessarily, but. To but, compare them, you need to look diagonally from uh, the same oxidation state as it goes to the different uh, formations. And from there, you can see that there is a um, somewhat of a correlated trend of downwards to the uh, oxidated state as being more stable with a lower charge. However, in this uh, particular one for catalyst what we're looking for would be uh, a very small change between two numbers to indicate a low band gap between the two states. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is uh, highlighted by red circles? Why, why do you put this circle? What, what does it mean? 
Oh, so, uh, as Dr. Parent uh, mentioned at the beginning, the they found a uh, the most stable was the plus two, and then the plus three to plus four conversion was quite rapid. And so then once enough energy had been found to have the plus two to plus three, they would automatically go to the plus four oxidation state. And so what I have highlighted under the uh, 156 electrons in the hydrate uh, molecule is the change in energy charge from the plus two hydrate of negative 307.6 to the plus uh, two oxidation state of the hydroxide is only uh, 0 0.0, uh, is 0 0.2 electron volts, which is the smallest change between any two states or charges hmm. on this table, I believe. Huh, okay. And uh, are you going to present uh, results on all oxidation states in the next slides, or you are going to focus only on some selected? Uh, just that uh, plus two state, I think, actually. Okay. Any other questions on this slide? So here we can see the, uh, the HOMO and the LUMO uh, orbitals for the molecule. And interestingly, well, maybe interesting since the right book, but uh, as expected, we can find them on the central ruthenium atom, and it's the highest, so it would obviously have the highest occupied orbital of any of the molecules, any of the atoms in the molecule. But also that uh, the LUMO attached to it is the one of the oxygens of the phosphate group that is nearest, which would suggest that there might possibly be some sort of uh, E orbital and D orbital hybridization happening between them, which would increase the stability of their interaction with the water molecule. Questions about that? In that case, next slide, please. So this is really the most interesting that uh, highlights what I was talking about earlier. We can see the uh, total density of states and what orbitals they correspond to. And what we see here is that the, the LUMO between that oxygen and ruthenium uh, atom is much, much closer to the uh, highest occupied state than any of the other uh, more highly energized orbitals, which corresponds, of course, to a very low band gap between them, and as such, a very small energy needed to interconvert uh, between them, which we've seen from the past two slides, but this is just a, a more clear visualization that there's only uh, less than one electron volt difference between the uh, energy of the HOMO orbital and the LUMO orbital, whereas there's a almost two and a half fold difference between the LUMO and then the next electron orbital after that. Hello? Uh-huh. Yes? Am I, am I speaking too softly? Is it is it question from Professor Parent? Someone told, uh, s s said hello. Did the mic cut out? Yes, we cannot hear you. So if uh, microphones mm -hmm. uh, do not transmit information, one can type questions and we all will see uh, them in the in the chat room. You cannot hear anyone. Um, well, if if you cannot hear, uh, maybe one can try the same link on the different browser, um, like uh, Chrome or or Firefox. Um, yes, 
Yes, to 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 rec reconnect. Yeah, let's wait until uh, Professor Pardon reconnects. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's working again. Uh huh. So Can you have, do you have question to St Stephen? Yes, yes. Oh, okay, yes. So uh, it, it's fine to ask questions now, or we can postpone it until uh, all slides are shown. Oh, no, yeah, I just lost, I lost audio for, oh. I wasn't hearing anything. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, all right. right. So do you, does anyone need me to just uh, repeat the slide or any previous slides? No, I put it on this slide, so if you can repeat this slide, that'd be good. Okay. Uh, so what we see on this slide is that this is a uh, visualization, visualization of density of states of the uh, different uh, orbitals on the uh, lithium ligand molecule. And what's interesting about it is that it's uh, primarily a visualization of the data that we've seen on the past two slides in that we can see that there is uh, less than a single electron volt difference between the, uh, the HOMO of the lithium atom and the LUMO, which would involve the oxygen atom that, that's uh, coordinated to it from the phosphate group. And this is uh, interesting is because a, obviously a small band gap correlates to a small energy required to excite the uh, electron into a higher energy state. And this compared to the um, less than one electron volt to excite from the, uh, the highest occupied orbital, the next highest uh, orbital after the LUMO is over two and a half volts higher in total energy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if there's no questions, we can go to the next slide. Okay, so uh, what, what you, yes? You said this was for the plus two charge? It should be. It was, uh, it's, it's been a while since I've looked at the project. Um, it, it, is this, this uh, is the plus two charge, right? Or is it the According to previous, previous slide, it, it, it looks like plus two. Yeah. Uh, Steven, yes, this is the, for the plus two charge. Uh, Steven, do you see your orbitals uh, to follow expected uh, octahedral splitting, like uh, three d orbitals uh, occupied with up and down spins and two unoccupied with up and down spins? Um, yes, I think that's what I believe so. Okay. Should we go to the next, or or there are questions to this one? I guess I'll ask a question. Uh huh. Yes, please. So, so we're in a plus two state, so we know ideally we would somehow want to end up at a plus four. Ideally, or figure out what the bit like the barrier is to the plus four. I believe that is what Dr. Parent mentioned at the beginning, yes. <clears throat> now would be removing electrons. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so essentially if you remove two electrons from this might be like your homo and homo minus one. Mm -hmm. Yes. So and then, not, not exactly because the structure will change when you remove electrons. Yes. All right, because yeah, transition metals are 
fairly sensitive. But I guess the interesting thing is that that oxygen is, I guess in one of them, the hydrogen, the oxygen is hybridized. Yes, it, it's likely hybridized with the, the ruthenium. So. I'm not, what do you mean by, by hybridized with ruthenium? I'm not sure what that means. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, the, uh, the closest oxygen from the phosphite uh, attachment on the part of the ligand is at least in oh, my mind, likely. There. Yes. So yes. The, the molecular yes. orbital is composed as a superposition of D orbital of ruthenium and P orbital mm -hmm. of oxygen. Yes. Okay. And uh, it is not a question, it is a, uh, I want to give a comment. Um, before seeing these results, I was hoping very much that some of the frontier orbitals would have some density on the reactant oxygen uh, from uh, on the re reactant water, but it seems that uh, only LUMO alpha plus three has very few density of this oxygen, so it is not involved in this uh, equilibrium geometry. Stephen, would you encourage, uh, would, you, would you like to sh present next slide? Yes, if there's no more questions. So, this is taken from a, uh, a movie made of the uh, reaction I suppose, you know, sure what to call it, uh, of the uh, hydrate state at 300 K. And so what we can see is that it very preferentially reacts to form the hydroxide state as a more stable molecule at this temperature with uh, the, the, the oxygens of the phosphate group uh, being moved away and also apparently stripping off one of the hydrogens from the from the water molecule. So does this um, simulation does this? Summarize that table that you presented before. Uh, this summarizes. summarizes. Is it uh, this summarizes the uh, the actual reaction of that of the previous slide? Uh, what happens with the interaction of the water molecule with the ligand? And it shows that um, once the water molecule moves. Uh, close to the ruthenium atom, it's uh, sort of grabbed on, and then the oxygens of the uh, oxygens of the phosphate group, which were previously interacting with the ruthenium, uh, move away and uh, also take with them one of the uh, protons, one of the hydrogen atoms from the water molecule, leaving a hydroxide form of the uh, again rather than the hydrate. Mm -hmm. And then this would still be two plus overall. Yes, this is still uh, two plus overall. So, so there's a small barrier for the chemical reaction to happen, or small enough for thermal energy. Yes. To do it, to act in it. So uh, may I add a comment? Yes, please. Uh, thank you. So when Stephen was starting this uh, mini project in the class and I was watching him doing it, I was going to criticize and ask him to correct um, 
thing that was looking as a mistake to me, but maybe it was his intuition and uh, good luck. So uh, this configuration, which is few uh, few femtoseconds after uh, he starts the uh, thermalized molecular dynamics, uh, it starts from uh, the model that he was drawing, and it was not fully optimized to octahedral coordination. So this ruthenium and this oxygen from phosphoxide uh, group are not bound. So uh, by uh, like lucky coincidence, or originally I thought it, it was an error, this bond was not present, and it is not present. Uh, it is, this distance is elongated. And due to the elongation of this, um, um, of the of this bond, the proton from water feels affinity to leave water and very quickly um, associate itself with uh, oxygen uh, ion from uh, phosphoxide group and. Uh, after the rest uh, in the results that Stephen uh, has uh, generated uh, seem more more automatic. So one has the hydroxyl group, and uh, it doesn't change anymore. But the um, phosphoxide group that has stolen the um, hydrogen experiences some transformation. And finally, at the end of the dynamics, this oxygen to ruthenium bond is finally formed. So the model comes back to what is uh, expected. But now uh, the original water converts, converts into hydroxyl and phosphoxide group has uh, another uh, proton associated with it. So uh, um, we cannot say for sure that it is a right result for right reason. Maybe it is an uh, exotic, unusual um, accident, but it, it, it uh, looks as going to right result because of the um, artificial elongation of ruthenium to oxygen, uh, oxygen group, which may happen at a high temperature or as a result of fluctuation. Um, so So then once that oxygen ruthenium bond comes back to its expected place, does that phosphate still hold on to that hydrogen? In results of Stephen, yes. It does it uh, holds on onto this hydrogen and does not return it back to the um, to what initially was a water. So it's a kind of irreversible uh, reaction that goes one way and doesn't return back. Is there anything happens to the massive group? To which group? The massive group, CH three. Okay. No, uh, this uh, there is a bond um, demonstrated here. Let me let me select different uh, color. So. There is a bond in uh, this region that is drawn as um, a line, but uh, we all know that uh, this line drawing sometimes is uh, just a glitch of a, of a code. So um, um, the drawn line means nothing. It is uh, 
when we inherited that at the initial configuration they were close enough and now it, it, it wants to to keep but the methyl group uh, stays intact at all uh, in this single trajectory what will happen in uh, if one repeats multiple trajectories at different conditions uh, uh, one needs to explore and uh, it's too early to, to make conclusions Stephen, would you like to continue the discussion and uh, check for questions or direct it to the next slide? Um, I'd like to ask for questions and go on and you can proceed to the next slide. Let me quickly check if there are any typed... Uh... Okay, there are no questions in the, in the chat line. So this is a, uh, a close-up of the initial uh, first frame from that last slide. So sorry, it's a bit. So the uh, uh, j just a second. The movie seems uh, quite uh, choppy, uh, so that uh, one can probably watch it independently. Independently on uh, like uh, in a different window, uh, here is the link uh, transferred through the through the chat room. And Stephen, uh, please uh, go ahead and, and explain if you want to uh, whatever needs to be explained. So, really, this is more of just a uh, and the put together. Um, slides from the last slide into a video format, and as you can see, the phosphate group very rapidly strips away one of the hydrogen atoms from the water molecule and then uh, shifts away from the ruthenium atom. And then we list uh, all that that shows. It does not show the reformation of the uh, oxygen ruthenium bond. No, it does not. So this, this just allows you to see uh, that last slide in motion. So, oh, it does. There's no anything I say I to say about the slide. Okay. So uh, feel free to read the discussion to the next slide if you think it is appropriate. So there's no questions, so we can move to the next slide. So, uh, so this is a uh, slide that was put together by Dr. Killen and uh, as we can see, the, there are several peaks and troughs which would correspond to uh, activation energy barriers and also stable intermediates uh, as the uh, reaction progresses through time. So, but uh, overall, what we can see is that it uh, declines in energy overall and to a slightly more stable state once it uh, converts from a high hydrate form to a hydroxide form with a split water molecule between the ruthenium and the oxygen on the phosphate. That's all I have to say about this slide. See the final slide. If there's no questions. It looks like invitation to questions. So, so normally where I'd ask for questions, but we've been answering them throughout. 
So I believe this is where the, uh, the brainstorming session will begin. <laughs> okay, uh, let me uh, invite oh. everyone to join me and thank uh, Stephen for presenting. And, uh, Sorry if I was a little uh, vague, as you can understand, I'm more than a little nervous. So, uh, any questions are, are uh, welcome at this time. So, in your total energy plot, at what time step does the phosphate uh, steal the hydrogen? Approximately. If I remember correctly, the uh, the fast fight stealing the hydrogen occurs somewhere around the the four hundred from per second mark, and the actual splitting into the hydrate form uh, occur not hydride, the hydroxide form with the oxygen with hydrogen attached firmly to the. Uh, the phosphorus oxygen is around the, the 600. I could be wrong about that. But... Well, that seems about right. Mm -hmm. More, more questions? Um, uh, Yvonne, do, do you have questions to Stephen? No? Okay. Not okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, David, is it fine or, or something induces your suspicion? This was all for the model where you had a water as your link in the interest, right? Yes. Do you have any of this data for the hydroxide? Uh, did not run as many in-depth tests on the hydroxide. Uh, that's because I did not notice any interesting interactions. Since it, this primarily is uh, converting the hydrate to the hydroxide, and that has already happened in the hydroxide. It doesn't really do any further reaction. Okay. So, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, thank, thank you for participating in. Uh, Fatima, do you have any questions to to Stephen? Oh, okay. Uh, Professor Parent, do did you want to clarify anything with uh, the last presenter? No, it's okay. Okay, yeah. Then uh, please uh, join me and uh, thank uh, Stephen for being brave and uh, presenting interesting results. Thank you for your time, Professor. Oh. Yeah, thank you, Stephen. And we are moving to the second uh, presentation by uh, Dr. Yu Han. So, uh, um, floor is yours. Please uh, go ahead presenting and give me. Um, I, I'm just will serve as a little slight uh, flipper uh, to save efforts on uh, connecting, reconnecting, and, and sharing screen. So, let me know when I need to. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I guess right now in this slide I consider three atomic models. And these models are different from Stevens because the coordination number is different for the same complex. So in my case, all the same are in the octahedral coordination. And um, also from uh, left to the right. I change the number of uh, uh, hydrogens uh, on the oxygen just to 
start the influence of different ligands onto the electronic structures. So basically, the total number of electrons and also atoms are the same from left to right. So total number of to, total number of ions will be identical, and it is easier to compare. Yes, and, and if, also the uh -huh. system is always in the neutral state, so I did not modify the number of electrons. Okay, okay, and um, if one would do the table in the same format as uh, uh, Stephen did, he had uh, the same oxidation state going along the anti-diagonal of the table. And in your configuration, it will be like symmetric. You'll be going down consistently. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any question? If no, next slide, please. So here I just show some frontier orbitals. So, oh, by the way, so right now all of this data are from PB calculations. Hmm. Are they spin polarized? Yes, spin polarized. And qualitatively, they. Um... There is also character of uh, d ruthenium uh, d orbitals in both Homo and Lumo, but it shows less density on ruthenium. Uh, is it consequence of geometry? Can you comment it? Like why uh, in the orbitals by Stephen it was like majority of charge on the d uh, orbitals of uh, ruthenium, and here it is more uh, like by Pi on on the on this uh, by pyridine. I guess it's just the nature of the pyridine ligand. Okay. And other uh, qualitative changes uh, uh, for every one of us to focus when following uh, orbitals from um, water to hydroxide to. Uh, oxygen. So I guess, for example, for the thermal orbitals, from left to right, we can see the contribution of the madam just increase. Mm -hmm. Yes, maybe this is due to the strength of the ligands directly onto the map. Mm -hmm. Because there are some changes. Next slide, please. So here I compare the energy difference between single lake state and triple lake state. So as, expect, as expected, so initially all of the models are in the single lake bond state. Um, so it is safe to use uh, singlet uh, for all configurations? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and that's, that's very true for um, the V6 second to the uh, and the EG energy gap is too big for the carrying energy to uh, compensate for it. And so they were, they were almost always single ground state. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you. Is it expected that the same um, uh, mutual arrangement of uh, singlet and triplet will be kept if one uh, removes electrons from 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 the from the model? Oh, so you mean just remove electrons, just go to the three? Yes. Or four? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Then it then it can't be a singlet. So if you remove one, it has to be a dot. That's. Uh, or it could be a pentet. Yeah, then it becomes harder. Okay. Um, if you do, it's probably going to be uh, 
work it. No, it can't be a four pin. You'll have three unpaired electrons, probably. Almost certainly have three unpaired electrons. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Do you have no, four or two unpaired? Check with a pen bit. Yeah. We're trying to move the electrons in the head. <laughs> no, 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 please do not do it. Generalize one half above the uh, D6. Once you go mm -hmm. below D6, it's going to be Okay. And um, another question to you, Woon. Um, is it, if the system is neutral or some electrons are already removed from, from it? The system is always in the neutral state. Okay. Yep, thank you. Next slide, please. So I guess here I just show some energy levels for different complex. So I guess, so here this is from PBE calculations. So it is well known that PBE underestimates the band gap. And also it is the case. Uh, another observation is the alpha spin theta component are the same. Mm. Mm. Next slide, please. So, I guess here, I guess test influence of an uh, implicit solvent. So, the solvent I use is just water molecule, water solvent. And uh, we can see the band air increase about 0.3 sample volts for the water case. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. Here I test the uh, electronic structure for HSU6. As we can see, the band gap increased a lot. I guess HSU6 may be the best choice for our calculations. Next slide. Oh, uh, may I ask before? Mm -hmm. So, um, yes. thank you. Are there ways to check uh, the band gap uh, experimentally, or is it known from the literature? Maybe from electrochemistry, like uh, reduction. Uh, you you give the band gap or maybe other spectroscopically how to how to yeah. um, assess which of these three functionals gives results closer to reality um, I, I, i'm i'm uh, throwing in an idea for the for discussion uh, if if you you are main main expert. If if you have answer, it will be uh, great. Oh, okay, that can be. Yeah, I have answer. I don't know if you would have seen him. Uh, no, so 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 where this we would just do uh, excitation, just excitation, using visible excitation to be able to measure the luminosity of that. Okay. Um, reasonably well. We wouldn't we wouldn't want to do direct oxidation or reduction. Um, well. You might be able to do that if you really need to. What the difference could that work? The problem with doing the oxidation reduction is, again, once we do the remove or add an electron, we uh, not necessarily change the structure. Okay, I see. Um, it, it may change the uh, the molecule itself. It will be different nuclear configuration, different structure. Okay. Yeah, but but that we don't have that problem if you use light uh, to just see where it absorbs. That problem doesn't come into play because it absorbs and then it can rearrange, but by that point it's already absorbed the light. Um, yeah, in this, this particular compound, it's, it, it, the redox reactions are not reversible. They're not fully reversible, so you will not be able to directly use it that way. Uh, at least not easily. It's probably for something, same as the both techniques, but the light, light is the way to do it. Okay, yeah, thank you. And uh, other uh, literature data or your, your previous experimental results from your lab about this uh, uh, UVV's gap? 
Yes, yes, we have that information. And uh, um, is it, can you tell uh, just from the top of the head uh, what is approximately either in nanometers or uh, electron volts or other units? Yeah, not in electron volts, I can't. Uh, I'll that way. Or, or just which color, at which color it absorbs, uh, it starts absorbing? It's pretty orange. Um, orange. But we're not sure that it's the same as you. Okay, so it, it, it will give even even bigger bigger number like uh, two point seven electron volts. So even uh, HSE uh, underestimates uh, the gap if we are talking about the same configuration. But from from what you are, you are talking, it's definitely uh, HSE results are, are the closest to to experiment. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yes. It's, uh, Yvonne, do you agree? Yes, uh, there is another effect. Maybe by considering water solvent, uh -huh. they can increase the band gap a little bit further. So can you go to the next slide? Yes. So next slide is about HSU6 plus solvent. Uh-huh. So, so here, if we just focus on the middle for the green, you can see the band gap is about 2.2 nanometers. Experimentally, it's like 2.6 or 50 or 70 nanometer. It's like 2.6 nanometers. Huh. Okay. Um, yeah. This is the best. Uh -huh. uh, no, it's, 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 it's really great. It, it's like 483 nanometers and uh, this uh, um, DFT one probably cannot get a better agreement. If one wants to get more sick fix, one needs to go to multi-reference expensive methods. Okay, yeah, this this this, mm -hmm. this looks really great. I guess mm -hmm. the only Okay. I guess the only problem I have right now is for the glue compound. So I guess my results, my EFT calculation is just not converged. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think we're going to want to be on that uh, phosphate. That's probably why. I don't think they both want to be on there. They probably, one of them is probably trying to give to the oxal, but uh, there might be too much of a barrier to that in the stimulation if we ever get there. Probably See? trying to turn into the green one. Okay. Um, next slide, please. You can just here just compute the absorption spectral for different models using different functionals. So clearly, for HSU six, we have a blue shift. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. So this is a uh, resolvance of different functional by considering the solvents effect. So it's a red line in uh, in this uh, four. Yeah, that, that one does look quite a bit like the actual spectrum. Okay, okay. So ideally, one may try to uh, share the data and plot experimental UEVs and computed UEVs on the same axis. Yeah, I'm just not sure that that red line, because that one is the one with both of them on the water, which would not be what I would expect. Um, the minimum energy 
configuration here. We would expect that it to be the green one. Also, if you ignore the higher energy, the lower energy peak is good. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we can do that. <laughs> okay. But um, comparing uh, experimental and computed spectra on the same axis seems uh, like healthy practice. Uh, if they mm -hmm. diverge, it will be a guidance to improve something. If they yeah. converge, it is a good sign that would um, approve uh, that everything we do afterwards is correct for the reviewers. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, I can send. Yeah. No problem. I can send. We have each of the oxidation states. Um, the experimental data for those. Oh, thank you. For, for ruthenium 2 and 4, anyway. We don't think there is a ruthenium uh, 3 that we formed in the solution. I guess next time for this set of compounds. I can just modify the number of electrons. So basically, just change the oxidation state and then yeah. compute the blobness spectral compared with the experimental data. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. And here is a, another set of data. So in this case, we want to figure out the energy difference between reactant and product. So mm -hmm. I compute the total energy for each of the species involved in the reaction. Well, that's not that that structure on the right isn't ferrocene. That's uh, dicamethyl ferrocene. That's that's okay. That's interesting. And we call, I call this one for the paper. Yeah, but it's not the right structure. <laughs> so you mean that's the uh, it's like a methyl ferrocene. That's FeCp star. That's a different. That's a different structure. Well, ferrocene has a uh, protons where those methyl groups are. So uh, uh, the the question is uh, that it is uh, named, labeled wrongly, or it is not a right uh, a complex to explore this. Uh... No, it, it should probably work also. Um, okay. ferrocene, I think, also is a stable. It's just probably more expensive to model. ferrocene also has a uh, very well established. Ooh, sorry, my dinner just got finished. <laughs> uh, also, has a very well established redox potential, I think. So, no issue there. Okay. Well, data's got to be well. <laughs> oh, my goodness. David, did you make it back? Yeah, I'm back. Oh, okay. So you, you did have some questions to, to ask? Uh, no, I did have a comment. No, I just I sent an email earlier. Um, that, that the way we're modeling this, where it's with the Pharisee, is not proton coupled. And so we end up with that hydronium at the end. And it makes it a little bit uh, difficult to interpret. Um, it would probably be better to reference it something more simple, like uh, something proton coupled. Um, the one I can easily think of is just proton reduction to hydrogen gas. So taking the electrons out of the ruthenium and putting them into hydrogen gas. And that would probably be even easier to model. To model. Uh, very cheap, I think. Yes, so you just need to model H2 and then the protons are coming are already in the starting point. This is a, a very 
interesting and healthy idea. We were discussing it uh, briefly with Yvonne uh, before, and um, I'm, I want to share an idea which may be right or wrong. It's uh, mm, mm -hmm. there could be additional complication in uh, looking for this uh, formation of H2 because uh, mm -hmm. just plainly, I imagine it as having two ruthenium catalysts in the same simulation cell that are approaching by these active sites and waters to each other. Yeah. Well. And uh, it, may, it, it will be not so expensive computationally, but uh, an attempt to put two things together, it gives so many uncertainty in mutual configurations that uh, result may be uh, like depending in orders of magnitude on whether they are yeah. aligned correctly. Right, right. But, 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 but what I was, okay, so what I was thinking, we just have the one ruthenium, mm -hmm. we calculate its energy, we just double that number. Okay. And then look at the product ruthenium, ruthenium that's missing electrons, and mm -hmm. double that number, and then have the hydrogen there. Or if we're doing from straight from two to four, um, we'd have to lose two protons from the routine or have a proton come from somewhere. Because that, it becomes a little bit trickier that way. Mm -hmm. but, okay. But I, I don't think there's need to model any kinetics because it's a fake reaction. We're not actually going to be, it's going to be thermodynamically uphill by a lot. Okay. We're using a reference to uh, proton, uh, to hydrogen gas. Um, Alternative we could do would be uh, oxygen gas to water or oxygen gas to peroxide. Mm -hmm. A very nice, well characterized um, proton couple oxidation events, oxidation reduction events, where we would be canceling out the proton and so we would get the, uh, be able to reference it directly to the value in water as a function of pH. We would need to worry about pH or proton coupling. Okay, okay. So it sounds like a uh, more conservative and uh, well thought way rather than uh, uh, plain modeling of the of the kinetics. Okay. Yeah, no, when the, there's no point for the kinetics for that particular part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great <laughs> comment. Thank, thank you. Next step is mm -hmm. yeah, I guess here I just want to know. So previously, I have some cations in the equation. I'm not very sure if the total energy reported from cation is accurate enough. So here I just did a little test by including a counter I. So in this case, each simulation cell is neutral. Mm -hmm. So the counter I I use is BF4. And uh, here I show the geometry and also total energy. I guess I want to point out there is one problem by using counter I. So this is because we have different arrangement for relative configurations between counter and the complex. Mm -hmm. so, and this can influence the total energy quite a lot. Mm. So I guess, for example, if we look at the bottom left, so the energy difference is about 0.3 electrons mm -hmm. because of the configuration difference. Um, another interesting observation is for the H, H3O and BF4. So I did spend quite a lot of time on this single complex. So initially, I just go to a 
H H three O and also BF four in the simulation cell and then run geometry optimization. It turns out this kind of model is not stable. Mm -hmm. It will always decompose through a geometry optimization. Mm -hmm. So instead of using the monomer, I use a dimer. And the dimer is quite stable. Um, an issue for this kind of simulation is the energy difference between reactant and the product is way different from our previous start, previous work. So in the previous slide, the energy difference is like um, minus four microvolts. Mm -hmm. There is minus point one five. Mm -hmm. It's order of magnitude difference. Yeah, so that's probably telling us that the uh, software is not happy modeling the cationic speed. <laughs> well, uh, um, the um, any software, even even if one uh, makes this uh, impl uh, implicit uh, modeling of uh, like dielectric solvent around, it's still far from reality. So one needs to do explicit water box, or um, which which is accessible only by DFT. Uh, on the other hand. Um, if there are interacting, like if there are two doublets or uh, whatever this uh, H3O plus, uh, even if they together form singlet, each of the molecules is is not a singlet, and one may need to use uh, multi configuration like uh, configuration interaction, which is quite possible for this small model, but it it could be. Uh, more and more expensive to do for all models, but one of the possible ways, if it goes to point of of getting serious agree of of targeting serious uh, agreement with uh, experiment, one may take few preferred configurations and do uh, like advanced level uh, methods. But uh, it it's it's it doesn't seem reasonable to do right away. It's only after we all agree on geometries and configurations because uh, with uncertainty of geometry, expensive methods will be a waste of resources. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Um, are, are there any conclusions or, or it is the, the last slide? Uh, there is no conclusion to say last time. Okay, uh, please join me in uh, thanking uh, Dr. Han. Uh, it's very uh, deep and interesting and multidimensional pr presentation. So let's uh, okay. open it for for discussion uh, to check if there are if there are questions. <clears throat> David, did you uh, do you have something? to comment or to, to request more details? No, not right now. Okay. Uh, let's check if... Steven, uh, do you want to ask something or maybe comment? No, I have no question. Okay. Fatima? <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's it's quite a new uh, research direction for for the for the whole group. Um, Aaron, any any comments? No, I'm okay. I'm okay. I think oh, the way forward is probably trying to reference. Uh, Proton couple partner with mm -hmm. proton cancel one built. And then hopefully we cancel out any uh, contribution from that. Okay. So um, 
Professor Parent, do, do you have maybe a summarizing word, like uh, something that you found uh, reasonable, something that you discouraged to continue, like uh, uh, any any feedback in, in general? You already oh, ma no. mentioned that kinetics <laughs> is uh, not uh, a priority from your point of view, but maybe only for one reaction. Uh, do you see um, any aspects where one may focus on kinetics and get something positive out of it? To focus on the kinetics for the system? Uh huh. Um, that's an interesting question because what we are doing, if we are looking, if you wanted to look at kinetics, we would be looking at the reaction of the pH bomb activation by these guys. Uh huh. Um, yeah, kinetics of electron transfer are not super interesting to model. They're fairly well understood. But we could definitely try to look at um, which which complexes, if we had multiple of those feeling complexes with the geometry optimization uh, and the optimized state, we could try the kinetics of those reacting with um, a model oxidizable CH1. That, that would be where the interest would be from our perspective. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, are there any other um, comments or points to, to discuss? More comments one, more comments two. More comments three. Okay, I suggest uh, you think uh, you and St both you and Steven. Uh, next time uh, we will meet same uh, um, link, and uh, there will be um, invited speaker from uh, who, who took the course, uh, Amir. Uh, he will talk about conjugated polymers. And it will be not, not very long, it will be maybe half an hour and with few more discussions. And in two weeks, uh, there will be, um, there is a plan to, to have a meeting on nickel catalyst. So with this, I, I would like to uh, suggest that we uh, complete the meeting. Everyone is welcome to, to disconnect. And uh, many thanks, Professor Parent, for joining and, and uh, keeping this uh, inspired uh, uh uh, inspiring co collaboration and, and discussion and uh, meeting is done. I'll stay here just in case anyone has quick questions. Yeah, thank you for uh, inviting me to get in. I hope thank it's you. useful for you. I hope oh. you're, having, uh, you're enjoying the yes. project as much as I am. <laughs> very useful, very useful. Thank you. <laughs>